All right, so uh, I have D&D &D in, I'm not wearing a watch, uh, a few hours, I'm guessing. Uh, I have done not a lot of prep, to be honest. It is the final session of the campaign, and I've got like pfft, some ideas written down in the Discord chat. That's about it. So today in the workshop, we're going to uh, print some stuff out, throw some stuff together, see if we can make a passable facsimile of the uh, encounter they're having today that is going to finish out the game. So stick with me. We're going to see if we can figure this out. Might completely fall apart. We might be doing this on pen and paper with pencil and our imaginations. But either way, it's going to work out great. Uh, stick with me. Yeah, my spouse calls this room the Bat Cave. Uh, it's not my fault. Look, okay, so it just it just sort of happened. Maybe that's actually how it happened to Bruce Wayne too. Like maybe he just started with a laptop and it got out of hand. So uh, hold on, let me show you what he means. So th this was where the first laptop I had was well, like the third iteration of that laptop. Okay, it's just a Microsoft Surface. You can draw on it. Great. Uh, it is now pretty much hooked up to the printer. Uh, because the printer decided it didn't want to play nice with the network anymore, so I had to direct cable to the tiny laptop, and so it kind of lives over here now because I used my stimulus money to build this bad boy over here. A business expense, obviously, because I'd run my side business out of this room. So, uh, you know, that's a knockoff Wacom and a nice computer. Okay, so that's actually not what made it the Bat Cave. What made it the Bat Cave... <laughs> was my day job, the employer that actually pays the bills, made me take home the computers from work. And uh, so there's like four screens in this office. Uh, okay, but we're not doing those today. All right, so our materials today that we're gonna need to do D&D, &D, computers, printer, paper, and I have, I think over here, yeah, knocked over, of course. Why would we have a clean workshop? Uh, the foam board that I'm going to end up putting in the laser cutter. All right, so I think that's going to be everything we need today. We'll see how it goes. Quick, this is this is kind of a super dumb thing that um, mostly people who have to make prints and, and do print work and uh, color corrections uh, will find neat, but I just haven't... Again, I haven't logged in in five months, so it's a whole thing. But um, I went to export image, okay, and it pops up, you know, hey, this is what your image is going to look like. And then there's this little slider right here that says intensity, okay? I'm like, whoa, what does that mean, intensity? And I beef it up, and it, it like, brightens and heightens the contrast of all the colors, and it, it looks like shit. But here's the thing. That's what I have to do to get it to print so it looks like normal because what shows up on the screen is not like the, the printer can only approximate what shows up on the screen and it requires some fiddling to get the printer to actually print something that looks like what you want it to look like the actual the actual map back here not this oversaturated monstrosity so like it looks like shit on the screen turns out good on the printer looks good on the screen turns out like shit on the printer like it's all thing but I'm just weirdly geeking out over this intensity slider so that it saves me importing this image into an image editing program to basically do that. And I can just export it right from the program. Ah, it's so cool. Uh, nor normally making stuff for D&D, &D, uh, I mean, specifically printing out the maps is about a good hour of me hollering at the printer but uh, a couple things happened one that incarnate setting meant i didn't have to do all this fussing in an illustration program and apparently uh five months ago j dot actually planned ahead and made this a lot easier to print out so uh I, I'm, I'm not sure what to do with all this energy i was ready to holler at the printer a bunch so these are the maps and they printed out beautifully i i mean i'm seriously still kind of like in awe that it worked out so well. And again, as you can see, they are double sized. I do two inch squares, um, which are, I mean, literally a large size in terms of D and D, but because we're scaling everything up, that's how the mini. And what I do is, let me show you here. I do have minis for the players. Most of the time I just use a cardboard cutout piece and a marker or whatever works, but I print the mini out uh, double size. I load it up into the resin printer, scale it up. This one is three cobolds in a trench coat. 
which is, of course, the DM <laughs> at all times. And you can see they fit really nicely on a two inch grid map. So um, this does limit. I'm not doing big sprawling dungeon crawl maps this way. Uh, I have done them. They are complicated when you're scaling up like this. But uh, honestly, most of the time what happens with players is they cluster up around the bad guys and blanket beat. So in that context, I find having the smaller area is actually really not that bad. It pretty much suits us just fine. So here we have a piece of black foam board. Now here's the, the biggest thing to note about foam board in the laser. One, it is a not sanctioned material, which means if I wreck my laser because I put foam board in it, that's on me. I don't, I, don't get a, <laughs> I don't get to use the warranty for that one, but I've done it before. It's really not a big deal. Uh, it doesn't smell amazing uh, because again, it's a laser. And because this is basically plastic foam in the middle that when the laser hits it, it melts. Not a lot, just a little. You just get kind of a little concave going in between the paper backing that's on the front and the back. Um, this mostly matters when you're building boxes and stuff that's edge to edge because, you know, your edges are melted inward and you need to account for that. But in this context, it'll be fine. So let's go ahead and put it in the laser. Okay. Okay. All right. The magic machine says it should cut out those circles in about five minutes. So we are going to... Ah. Press the big button. It's gonna zoom and make a bunch of noise. Yay! No more video for that. <laughs> Okay. Doo -doo. Circles. So exciting. And um, and this is what I mean, by the way, by it melting it a little. So you can actually see there's a little bit of a lip on the paper now. Again, not the end of the world. And since we're just stacking them and gluing them together, totes fine. But uh, just something to be aware of in terms of the laser there. I am ready for assembly. Uh, I have all my circles cut out. I have all the bits that I need. I have my hot glue gun heated up. I actually have some duplicate bits because my first attempt to cut out, I set on fire a little bit. I had my settings wrong and I didn't double check. So we have um, some extra, it's a uh, texture. We have some extra texture for some of the bits we might include. Uh, but all this really means is we can get creative and we actually have a little more room to expand with assembly, which is exciting. It's just an opportunity. It's not a, I almost set my lab on fire mess up. That's all. So we're going to get started. I'm going to point the camera down so you can actually see what I'm working on and we'll get it going. So here's, here's one of my favorite parts about doing laser work is you ever buy a board game and find the best part about the board game is punching out all the little bits. <laughs> like... Is that just me? I know that's not just me. I, I happen to, I, I mean, for a fact. I could probably start a board game club whose only interaction with board games is going through and popping out the bits. So let's get all of these set up. <laughs>
that is the whole build today. It's quick and dirty. It's just a little almost spaceship looking thing, but it's supposed to be an arcane bomb. Uh, you can see it definitely glows from within. I took all, some of the extra bits and just glued them on for extra effect. If I have a little time today before D&D, &D, and mind you, I've got a couple hours left, I still have to clean up and basically make some food for today too and set out the snacks. It's, you know, it is what it is. Um, but if I have a little time, I will probably paint this. I'll just hit it up with the paintbrush or the airbrush, put a coat of paint on it, make it a little more interesting. But even just in black foam, it's pretty fun. And I do imagine at some point my players are gonna be like, hey, I can defuse the bomb. Bomb goes on, bomb goes off, bomb goes on, bomb goes off. But it'll be a little more complicated than that at the table, but certainly for the sake of the GM, it is bomb goes on, bomb goes off. Well, hopefully the bomb doesn't go off. Hopefully they save Sharn, finish the campaign, become big damn heroes, uh, but if not, might be a smoking crater where Sean go Sharn is. Bomb goes off. Bob goes on. Bomb goes boom. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Like I said, it was new, a new experiment. I think I enjoyed it. We'll probably do it again when I have the, uh, the time and the initiative and the energy and the good lighting. <laughs> so I uh, will make it work. But hey, in the meantime, uh, masks up, roll high, and everybody have a great day. Thanks you took to hang out with me while I built this little journey along. It was again my first time. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. He wanted a cupcake. The ones that I have for D&D &D today. So he'll get one. Just not right now. <laughs> All right, and that is the whole build today. I really appreciate you guys coming along with me for my journal. Why are my children so loud? Why? Not dealing with her child. No, you can wash your own hands. You don't need my help. You're a big kid. Go wash your hands. Go, here, let me chase you out of the office and close the door. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> All right, bye. Oh.